Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at another PC on a stick, sorta. Uh, this is the Azul Quantum Access Plus and it is a, a rather large PC on a stick and it has Ethernet built into it also. A lot of stuff running in this very compact form factor here. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Azul. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look and see what this thing can do. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is $155 as you see it. It's got an Intel Atom X5Z 8300 Cherry Trail processor. We've seen that on a bunch of mini PCs we've looked at over the last year and a half or so. Four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, which is very good. 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, which is not so good because as we found with Windows lately, you need a little more storage than uh, what a lot of these PCs are giving you. So I would have liked to have seen 64 gigabytes available. I believe there is a version with that much storage, but it looks like at the moment on Amazon, it's almost doubled the price, which is a lot to ask for uh, just a little bump of storage there. Uh, but you do have a micro SD card slot there to augment uh, some of its lack of storage with uh, a little additional storage that you can snap in. And of course, the card will be flush to the side of the device. Now, this is very heavy. And the reason is, is because it's got uh, metal on the top and bottom. The entire computer is essentially a heat sink. And there's no fan on this, so it radiates its heat out. Uh, onto the heat sink on top. So it will get warm to the touch and it also makes it heavy. So heavy, in fact, that when we were plugging this into a monitor uh, where the HDMI port was underneath it, uh, this thing was falling out under its own weight. So it's not something that I would really recommend using as a stick PC uh, because it really is going to put a lot of strain on your HDMI port if you have it in this position and it certainly uh, might fall out if you have it uh, hanging upside down. So they do give you an extension cable in the box to make it a little bit easier. I do have a nice Wi-Fi antenna on here for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection. So if it is behind a TV or something, you might get a decent Wi-Fi signal. But uh, the real reason for considering this is the fact that it does have that 100 megabit Ethernet jack in the back, which makes it a very good little device for cable cord cutting and maybe some light home theater. I'll get to some of the reasons why it's not a great home theater PC a little later in the review. You also have a Kensington lock here for keeping it from uh, walking away with somebody. And you have a headphone jack on the back here also if somehow you can fit some headphones behind the uh, behind your TV there. On the other side here, you've got three USB ports. You have a USB 2.0 port, a USB 3.0 port, and then this micro USB port is for power. Uh, that is where the cable plugs into for that. And then, of course, you got a power button here, and there is a light that will turn on uh, when the computer is operating. But one thing to keep in mind here is that there is not a lot of power going into this device. The power supply gives you 5 volts at 3 amps, not all that much more than a tablet charger, for example. And there's a lot of overhead here of managing the computer and all the stuff that's already hooked up to it. So if you do have a hard drive or something like that that you wish to connect via USB, my advice is to use a hard drive with its own power supply uh, or use a powered USB hub. So let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. We're going to set it up on the desk and run all of our usual tests with it. Let's take a look. So I figured I would kick things off with some TV watching. We've got my HD home run working here. This is a uh, device that allows you to tune your over-the-air broadcast or cable TV broadcast over your network. And in full disclosure, they are an occasional sponsor here on the channel. And what we're doing here is running with some uh, broadcast coming over my cable system. And this is something that uh, really bogs down a Wi-Fi network typically. And a lot of times these mini PCs that don't have Ethernet are not able to play back this stuff smoothly because of the tremendous amount of packets that come over, especially for over-the-air broadcasts that uh, work in MPEG-2 like this particular one does. So it's able to keep up very nicely here because it does have uh, that Ethernet built in. We would not see the same performance on the Wi-Fi usually with this. And uh, the Wi-Fi here is 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, but I don't believe it supports wireless AC. So uh, the Ethernet is really important, especially if you are uh, tuning over the air broadcast. You can also see how quickly we're able to switch between channels here. And it seems to be uh, working quite nicely as a uh, tuner box as part of my big DVR that I've been talking about here on the channel over the last couple of months. And I'll put a link to that video series down below so you can see exactly what the context is here for that. But uh, this is probably why you would want something like this with the Ethernet to be able to do this 
uh, yet at the same time be able to uh, jump back over to Windows and start doing some other work on it too. So we are running the uh, Windows version of the HD Home Run app here and of course we have a full uh, Windows PC at our disposal as well. And this is a regular Windows PC so we can do regular Windows PC stuff with it. We started off with some web browsing. We loaded up my YouTube channel in one of its 1080p videos at 60 frames per second in the Edge browser. No drop frames, very smooth playback like we've seen on other Cherry Trail based devices we have looked at so it's performing as expected there. Uh, web browsing also did very well on it with the Ethernet attached. Pretty snappy performance for uh, browsing multimedia rich websites. So that was a good thing. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 20.2, which puts it right in line with other devices with this similar processor. And we also had a very good experience running Microsoft Word on it and doing all the things you might do in a productivity environment. And one area where one of these stick PCs works very well is maybe something you have dedicated to a projector or uh, some kind of pre presentation area in your office and uh, with it connected to the network you can easily get files back and forth to it and it should be okay for some basic PowerPoint stuff too. Now as I like to remind people these little mini PCs are not necessarily gaming powerhouses but uh, if you get enough stuff attached to them you can run some games on them and uh, we usually do a couple of things here on the channel like running Minecraft which we did of course and we got our frame rates around 20 to 30 frames per second at 1080p uh, that is with the Optifine performance enhancing plugin installed and this was the Java version of Minecraft, not the Windows 10 one. So the Windows 10 one might do better, but most people run the Java one. So if you got a kid and you're looking for a cheap PC, it should be okay for Minecraft, but of course there are more expensive PCs that do better. It also does very well with older games, and we ran Half-Life 2 on it, which came out about 10 or 12 years ago or so. And there we got some pretty decent frame rates, again, in line with other Cherry Trail devices, around 37 to 50 frames per second, depending on what was going on in the uh, scene there. So a lot of the older games that are on Steam and uh, GOG and other sites, you should be able to run on here, but you won't run anything current on it, although uh, these do very well for for game streaming in your home, especially because this has an Ethernet jack built into it. So if you want to do Steam in-home streaming or something like it, you'll probably have a pretty good experience using this device as long as you're plugged into Ethernet. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 1,592, which does put this about where other Atom X5 Cherry Trail based devices end up. So performance wise for games at least, uh, this should not be any better or worse than uh, many of the other cheap mini PCs we've looked at with this similar hardware installed. Now one thing to keep in mind when you are using this computer is that it will get very very hot to the touch and that is okay because uh, this does have again that heat sink on the top here and as long as you've got good airflow uh, going over the top you should be uh, good without any real throttling going on. In fact we ran the uh, 3D Mark stress test which measures uh, how often these chips will slow down when they get too hot because without a fan these chips are designed to actually run slower to uh, let them cool off a bit and we got a score of 97.6 percent on this which is probably I think the best score we've seen on one of these fanless uh, Cherry Trail based devices to date which is actually pretty good so uh, this heat sink design seems to be uh, keeping the computer running consistently even when you've got a pretty heavy load going onto it which I was uh, quite impressed with so I think if you are looking to watch TV or movies on here uh, you probably will not see a degradation of performance provided you've got enough uh, clean airflow flow going over it. I don't think you have to put a fan on it, but uh, you want to keep the area around it clear just so that heat has some place to go. And it looks like this uh, heat sink here is working as intended. And speaking of movies, we did our home theater tests on this. And unfortunately, it falls short as a home theater PC for me because it doesn't support DTS HD or Dolby True HD pass-through in Kodi. So if you are an enthusiast with your Blu-ray movies as I am, you're not going to get the best audio quality out of here. It did support pass-through of regular Dolby Digital and regular DTS, so it's not a total washout, uh, but just keep that in mind. It was able to switch into 24p for uh, films that are shot at that frame rate, so that was okay. But it was able to play back Blu-ray uh, type files, the MKV files we like to test here, so we did test one from the uh, Jellyfish Benchmark Suite, it did okay with that. But these do not do very well with some of the newer HEVC codecs. So if you are running some uh, high efficiency codec stuff, uh, this is probably not the computer for you. You might want to look at one of the newer Apollo Lake PCs that we've been looking at here on the channel. So that is the Azul Quantum Access Plus Mini PC. Not a bad little device here. It works much better as a mini PC versus a stick, just given how heavy it is. 
I am concerned if you do plug it into the side or bottom of your TV, it might uh, put a little too much weight on that HDMI connector or it might just fall out uh, as it did for us. But all that weight comes to you because of this heat sink on here that did a very nice job of keeping this thing cool on our stress tests. We didn't see any uh, noticeable thermal throttling, which is great for uh, movie playback as well as perhaps some light gaming or whatnot on it. And of course, you've got the uh, Ethernet here. Uh, the only thing that gives me pause in recommending this as a home theater PC is the fact that it doesn't handle the lossless audio formats, namely DTS HD and Dolby True HD. I believe manufacturers have to pay a license to get that enabled, and they apparently didn't pay it. So uh, that is why we're not seeing those audio formats supported here, which is unfortunate. I think it would do much better uh, if it had those because it is performing very well for uh, at least Blu-ray video playback. And for alternative operating systems like Ubuntu and other Linux distributions, this is probably not the right computer for you, uh, primarily because these Cherry Trail devices don't do very well with Linux. They have some issues with their Wi-Fi and audio drivers, for example, and you don't get a full featured experience many times. Uh, this one, no exception. But uh, some of the Apollo Lake-based machines that we've been looking at that cost around the same price as this one and actually perform a little better actually do run those uh, operating systems quite well. So you might want to look at uh, one of those. But uh, for basic transportation here, for some light TV watching with the Windows capability built in, not a bad little device. And again, I'm very pleased with its ability to keep itself from overheating. So that'll do it for this one. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.